Okay, cool. Thank you. Did you got it. The holidays? Just, yeah, I just turned in my final grades this morning, so I got some more paper. Hey, good. Oh. Good. Good. Well, do we have a quorum, as they say? Sure. Six, the world, seven. The world of meetings? Seven's bigger than half of twelve. So no, our twelve is not, we're, we're nine. We're actually nine official and two alternates. So we, so we have too many people for the meeting. <laughs> so uh, it's nine, but we've lost one person. Yes, yeah, so nine is the quorum. So we need to have five. <clears throat> all right, well, I'd like to get us going, if that's all right with everybody. Right. And I, I want us to endeavor to stick with the sort of the time frame that you see on the agenda here, just because we've got some interesting topics that we could get sucked into any one of them, but I don't think it's fair to the other topics. And so I'm going to try to keep us moving, if that's all, all right. right with everybody. Good plan. Uh, Where did those extra ones go? Oh, I don't have them here. Do you want them? Oh, okay. Here we get the full deck. Already, and are we on? No, we're on fine. We're on. Okay. Okay. Well, we want we have a to guest to tonight, a special guest. We might take right. it back at more people. That's okay. That's fine. <laughs> okay. We have several guests, but our special guest is the next mayor of Yellow Springs. Pam, thanks for being here. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you appreciate it. <laughs> and um, this is called conversation with Pam tonight, uh, <laughs> and so I'm not exactly. Sure, whether it was something that you uh, wanted to like kick off, or how do you want to do this? Well, I'm here at invitation of your committee by phone call from one of your members, and I believe it was just to quote unquote see what some of your ideas might be for the upcoming um, cycle of mayor's court, etc., and just have a, literally a conversation about some of the things I might have in mind, which won't take me long to answer given that I haven't had my state training yet so it's like I'm in that ambiguous place where I'm not sure what some of the questions are and certainly not the answers but I'm more than happy to give a little introduction and then if you have questions or if you want to ask questions first or set me on my course here I, I serve at your pleasure one thing I thought would be good is just this transition period telling us how that's going to go too because I know there's a little, uh, there might be a little gap or something. Sure, and that's probably a good way to start. Yeah. Right now I'm mayor-elect. Ever since the election I've, I've been mayor-elect. I will take over the reins of the, the mayor on January 1. Dave Fobert's term expires at midnight on New Year's Eve. Therefore, uh, there's there's been some discussion. It's not top secret or anything, but there's been some discussion of having uh, swearing in downtown on New Year's Eve, oh. possibly, and sort of making it a celebratory sort of thing. Followed we're working by the, on that by the arrest of the mayor. There you go. <laughs> Hopefully not. But we're working on working on something special that may happen there if we can keep Mayor Fobert awake. Uh, till, till about 10.30 or quarter of 11 or so. But that'll happen. I think Brian House is going to help arrange that with the little art. And maybe have the swearing in there, the mayor would swear me in, and then I would turn around and swear in the other two new council members. Whether we do something then on the first council meeting as far as a secondary swearing in, it's not really necessary from what we've been told. Legal opinions say not necessary. So. Um, I've been doing a lot of activities, doing a lot of things already. I've been, as many of you are aware, I've been coming to and watching Mayor's Court since I declared candidacy in April. Whenever I was in town, I would come to the Mayor's Court. And I learned a lot just by observing Mayor Fogart. I've also been reading everything I could get my hands on, um, things that have been sent to me. Laura's graciously shared quite a few things. Uh, things I've found online, people I've talked to, I've met with everyone from our solicitor to uh, several meetings with Chief Carlson, uh, certainly tutelage and conversations with Dave Fobert, with June Allison. I've had appointments with Patty Bates. So all through this campaign I've been trying to read as much as I could, but now that it's sort of feet on the ground, I've been actually, and I know that it's me, I thought, well, I do all this homework if it doesn't turn out to 
be me who becomes the next mayor. So once I, I uh, got the election behind me, then I started really digging in and doing my homework. So that said, I can tell you what what's happened thus far and what's going to happen the next, I'd say the next month, month and a half, is going to be fairly critical. I'll take the reins January 1. Dave is no longer mayor as of January 1. I'm the mayor, but I haven't had the required state training to, to run mayor's court, to watch mayor's court, to handle mayor's court until after that training. That training is for me on January 18th and 19th. On the 18th, it's the six hour general instructions on how to do a lot of the mayor's chores, etc., and then um, running mayor's court. And then on the 19th, it's more specifically on OVI cases. So once I get that training underway, I can sit and lead the mayor's court. So therefore, the first mayor's court that I'll be officially in charge of, and I talked with the chief about this, and I said, go for it. I'll, I'll take it out of the gate will be January 22nd, Monday, January 22nd. That's what we have scheduled now. In discussions with Chief Carlson, and this is again sort of to your point, uh, Judith, I think, when you asked what's this transition period, Chief and I have decided, he's, he said, oh, Pam, I'll do whatever you want or whatever you feel comfortable with <coughs> as far as taking over for mayor's court. So I, I, in thinking about this, I thought what might work the best is clearly, it's been easy for me, well not easy, but it's been possible for me to see the difference between minor misdemeanors and some of the more serious cases that potentially could come to mayor's court. So what I suggested to the chief was, why don't, why don't we, why don't you have the conversation with your officers that Pam will be taking over January 22nd as far as hearing the cases. Let's stick with some mi the real minor traffic sort of things that composed, certainly comprise the bulk of what we see in Mayor's Court anyway. So those are the instructions he'll be giving to his officers. Let's do the minor stuff for the first couple of cases, uh, times Pam's in charge. That would be the end of January, January 22nd, that would be the second Monday in February. Then there's going to be another critical change, which is June Allison will be retiring. When Dave goes, June goes. And June is, has been doing this as long as Dave has, as far as being the clerk and being the, the person who does all the paperwork and so forth. So I'll be working with June to, she's going to explain that system to me and we'll begin actively looking for a new clerk of courts because to me that's a pretty critical position because that's the person that does the paperwork, that's the person that deals with the police back and forth with the citations which have to be marked very specifically and very carefully or you can get dinged from that when you get your audits and so forth. So, we'll be starting post haste, I would think, certainly after the Christmas holiday, to advertise and get geared up for a new clerk. June will overlap for a month and a half with that new person. And apparently, as with many of our occupations now, I know teaching certainly one of them, computer programs have evolved to the point where a lot of this is just data entry with what it is that the clerk has to do, the coordination between the police department citations and the specialized computer program that records all the stuff and shoots it to the proper folder, if you will. So that'll be a critical skill for the next clerk, somebody who can manage that task. So the new clerk, certainly me, uh, we'll, and working with Chief Carlson, who's of course new, we'll be learning this system together. So, uh, I view the critical transition period as being January, once I take office, once I start observing, uh, go from observing mayor's court 
to actually doing mayor's court. There'll be another mayor's court at the end of December. I think that's December 28th, whatever that Monday is. Then there'll be another one the 1st of January. I uh, know there will not be another one the first part of January because Dave will no longer be mayor and I won't be in charge yet because I haven't had my training. So therefore, what the officers are going to do is just push off all mayor's court cases until that 28th. So that's the system that we've come up with thus far. Uh, and I guess as far as logistically and procedurally, that's what things are going to look like as far as the transition. Some of you may have heard, uh, Dave invited me up last night. We had mayor's court and he invited me up to sit with him. He got about six words out of his mouth and he said, Pam, yeah, come on up here. And so he showed me as he would do things. And of course, the folks who were in the audience, I, I said, you've got a tutorial too. So it was, it was a fun procedure last night. And there were about seven cases that, that happened. And it took about half an hour, which was one of, is actually one of our longer mayor's courts. And Dave's been, I can't say enough, he's been more than gracious for the last several months. He's, whenever I show up, he sticks around after mayor's court, he answers my questions, and we have a conversation. So the, the transit, and, he, and he's also very willing to help. He, he agreed the first couple times I do it, he said I'm more than happy to sit in the crowd and, you know, hold up flashcards or give you a <laughs> now or something. So I, I feel very pleased with the transition that he's providing. So, question so I, for I guess I could start with that. Um, yes, and, and if at any point you have questions, just let me know. Well, I'd <coughs> Yeah, the, uh, I went to the mayor's court uh, candidate night at Mills Lawn. Yes. And, you know, of the four candidates, the other three, uh, the position was we want to have a prosecutor or someone with legal experience uh, uh, involved in, in it. You were the only one who Correct. seemed uh, to not be very keen on having a prosecutor involved. I. You know, and I, I was on the mayor's court subcommittee, and and at one point I called a bunch of mayor's courts, and all mayor's courts that I called had a solicitor, a uh, some call it solicitor rather than prosecutor, but they have someone with legal experience involved, and uh, and, and then then my data was expanded by stuff Laura did, and I think she found from us saying that I'm very very concerned that if we do not have a prosecutor involved, that we may we will be in jeopardy of losing this. The state at one point tried to get, they made some overtures to get rid of them. Uh, Ellis invited uh, one of our early meetings, someone from UD who had been on the law faculty, and he basically said, mayor's courts are, are, uh, are a total travesty of justice because the the mayor is the judge, the prosecutor, and the defender, and this is totally contrary to the way. I'm very concerned that if we just go the way Fulver has been doing it, we're going to lose our mayor's court. And I've also talked to the police officers, and they, some of them, have real concerns about uh, the way it has been run, and that may be part of why They've, they've stopped sending a lot of cases to it. I, I just am concerned, and I just want to share that concern. In my research, what I've discovered was this is a real dichotomy. There's, on this spectrum, there's folks on one side that you just described, and then there's the other side that harkens back and links back to a lot of Ohio history, historically, as a home rule village, as um, local justice emphasis and so forth. I think mayor's courts have been uh, certainly disparaged by the legal profession. Nine times out of ten, if you find people really cracking down on mayor's courts, They've got some co uh, connection to the legal profession, is uh -huh. what I'm and finding. And that was the case. In the, yeah. Okay. 
And so a lot of the articles I read, if it's a law article, if it's case law, whatever it is, uh, it's very disparaging on Mayor's Court for reasons you mentioned now. It's, it's local justice, it's spaghetti westerns, it's uh, speed traps, it's this and that. It's very disparaging. However, the flip side of that is we have long history in Ohio, and there's only, yeah, as you're probably aware, there's only two states in the country that have mayor's courts, or one of them. What's the other one? Louisiana. Louisiana, mm -hmm. correct. So we're the only two. Um, and I think we have them for a very historically accurate and important reason. Now, how long are we going to have them? If you follow the, what the state Supreme Court is saying, if you follow some of the opinions coming down from them, certainly some of the more informal articles that are written. It's, it's really frowned upon, and I get it. We live in a litigious society. I also, and if we start looking at the statistics, um, going back to, let's say, 2007, in 2007, the number of cases run by mayors of mayor's courts in Ohio, and I found a little, mm -hmm. you can just pass this around, maybe you've seen this, I don't know. I found a little graphic that illustrates uh, where, where mayor's courts are, which counties have them. There's declining number of mayor's courts in Ohio, of course, going back to 2007, approximately one-third of the cases that appeared in mayor's courts were uh, trial by mayor or an acting mayor and the other two-thirds were tried by a magistrate, prosecutor, some sort of lawyer. In 2011, that number out of 318 mayor's courts approximately, and the more reading I do, this number is a lot of wiggle room in that number is how many mayor's courts are actually out there. But in 2011, 318 mayor's courts, 23 of them were mayoral, run by the mayor, a non-lawyer mayor, so that's 14%. So already our numbers are decreasing and decreasing, and I get that. And the position I, on which I ran before the election was to very, because I did take a different tack than the other candidates, and the position on which I ran was I'm going to go as long as possible, as long as feasible, without bringing in a magistrate or a prosecutor right away. Okay. I know we're heading in that direction. Everything I'm reading is telling me we're heading in that direction. Uh, legal opinions say we're heading in that direction, and I get that. And I also understand we can hear more cases if we have you know, different levels of misdemeanors, if we have legal opinion in the, in the room. And that makes sense to me, and it certainly, at the end of the day, would be very helpful to me. So I, I'm not saying I'm dismissing that. I'm okay. saying, you know, uh, one of the other candidates said, I'm not going to hear a case unless I have a prosecutor or some sort of legal opinion. I'm, I'm just not going to do it. And I was not, that was not my opinion. Okay. Half, after watching Mayor Fobert for all those months, I thought, okay, I see what he's doing. I'm reading about what he's doing and why he's doing it based on mayor's courts in Ohio legal opinions and so forth, and I, I think I can continue in this venue for a while. One of the things I'm honestly very concerned about is budgetary yeah. and financial. Right. I'd love to have, sure, why not bring in a prosecutor, why not have a lawyer sitting here? Well, I'll tell you, one of the reasons is financial. So if we can come up with the money, which maybe we can, there'll be some budget savings, some cost cutting. Um, See how I want to say this. Honestly, when there's an imminent change of personnel under the purview of the mayor, I think there's going to be some cost savings and perhaps a new <coughs> clerk, if you will, the clerk of courts, could be a cost saving spot, some place we could look at. But that, that was a big concern for me, and I didn't want to go there right away. We plotted the data at one point of expenses and income, and it used to be the mayor's court was a profit making, but it yes. crossed over a couple of years back, and it's losing money for the last several years. Okay, so unlike some of those speed traps in northern Ohio, they're pulling in half a million bucks yeah. into their coffers because they, their, uh, yeah. their jurisdiction includes 
you know, half of a state route, half a mile of a state route, or a mile of an interstate or something, we don't really fall in that category. So that's, that's why I'm saying, no, I'm going to start without one. But should, should the, certainly the opinion of the uh, powers to be up here change? Should we come up with the budget for it? I know legally our solicitor would like to see that eventually. And who knows, I might do the first or second mayor's court and go, oh my God, give me a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll see. Well, um, Mayor Fogarty even said he wants one. Yes. So, yeah. so I, I can see it. Like we've kind of done it. Well, I, I just, a let's see who else around the table, and then we'll get to you. Okay. That's all right. Yeah, cool. I just wanted to, uh, yeah, I'm watching the clock here. Uh, an important focus that the Justice System Task Force is, is, uh, has been directed by council to address is disparate impacts on the poor. You know, the, yes. the justice system disparate impacts on the poor. And obviously, that's not going to happen at Green County. If the, likely it will happen at the mayor's court if, you know, and in terms of if a person is cited for something. Um, so I just wonder your thoughts on that, that kind of a goal, if you think about that at all. Oh, I have been thinking about that. It's, it's something that I've been very aware of during the decision, the, as I watch Mayor Fobert make his decisions. And he has told me on more than one occasion that he definitely takes that into consideration when dispensing his justice. He's allowed wiggle room with the fine st fee structure, fine structure, the, uh, not, the, not the court costs, but the fines. So, you know. What are the, the, um, the, 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 uh, the court cost is $80. And that's, I mean, that's what it is. He can't play with that, but he can play with those things that fines. Uh, who sets who sets the court cost? I think, the court, I think, I think it's, it's they vary from court to court, so it's I don't the know council, and that's that's another there. thing. There's some changes <laughs> coming. <laughs> and well, you haven't, but I know our village manager has potential changes to fee structures in the back of their mind. Because apparently we're falling in below <laughs> some of the area other municipalities, mayors' courts, and so forth. So bringing our fee structure up to date may be something we, we talk about in the future. I think you also have the power to waive them, at least most judges do. In other words, you don't charge it. Correct. Yeah. Right. And I've seen that happen as well. I'll also point out to you that we've often said, it's often been said that, well, we just need to start getting more cases in, and then, of course, you get more cases and you get more, accumulate more fees and so forth. And the chief made it really clear to me that he can't order his officers to cite cases to mayor's court. Ultimately, it's at their discretion. But he said, um, he said after a while it becomes a mindset. Once the new chief starts encouraging certain cases to come to mayor's court, that it becomes a mindset and part of the culture. So. Laura, you have a question. Yes. Well, some comments. Um, so I was at Mayor's Court yesterday, and there were at least four young people there who um, the cases could have been handled differently. And, and I think all the candidates, when we ran, all agreed on restorative justice and diversion as a good thing. And this is why, and, and Pam, you'll start to see it in the structure of things, how this court is set up to come in, plead guilty, get a light sentence from a kindly mayor. That's what it's set up to do. If you had a prosecutor, I, I didn't see their criminal records, but I'm going to guess that three of those young people probably had no criminal record and it was a first time offense. Those are perfect candidates for diversion. Have a prosecutor sign up with the prosecutor for diversion, go do community service or driver's ed or whatever you need to do to get it through your head that this was a bad thing. But you do that and then we're going to dismiss your case. The prosecutor dismisses your case, not the mayor. The mayor doesn't right. have the power to do that. Right. That is how restorative justice works. So you have to do it before they come in and plead guilty. 
The other thing is, they don't, those young people, and they're not represented, and they don't know they should be pleading guilty to those traffic offenses. They ought to be pleading no contest, because it's better on their insurance side, okay? But they don't know that. So there's a lot we can do to reduce the harm that this court does to people's lives. There's one person here who maybe she pled to something that could get her deported, maybe, depending on her immigration status. Because even a misdemeanor now can get you deported. So a misdemeanor can keep you from working at Cresco Labs. A misdemeanor, there are the, what's changed in the last 25 years is the collateral <coughs> consequences to convictions. You may not get licensure, you may not get a scholarship, you may not get into the college of your choice, you may get kicked out of the college of your choice, you may not get housing, you may not get public housing. It goes on and on. The, I think that their websites attract this sort of thing. I think for misdemeanors alone, the, the collateral consequences can be like over 100. You may not get your nursing license. That one guy, I kept, I was screaming in my head, don't plead guilty, you may not get your nursing license. I don't know. You know, you have to look at that stuff now. I'm just saying, so, uh, and for sure, if, if, if what, they're sending all the more, seri the more serious misdemeanors down, down there. Well, those are the, exactly the ones that need to be here. Now, some of them you don't have jurisdiction, like DBs, I get that. But bring, if you brought them all back, based on my calculations, we'd be bringing in an extra $25,000 worth of income. The whole cost of prosecutor argument, I think, is a red herring because it won't cost that much, because there's not that much time involved maybe a few hours a month. You know, if you run a diversion program, maybe five hours a month. It's just not that much, 500, 600, but you pay them $100 an hour, you know. So anyway, I just don't think it's, I think if you, the income you're gonna bring in, balanced off with the, you're gonna to have to bring that income in because you're gonna get rid of some income because you're gonna divert. Now you can charge people a, a fee to be in diversion, which equals the court costs you to do that. Hey, Laura. I, I'm so I'm sorry, but anyway, that's Because I want to give other people a chance to talk mm -hmm. and then wrap yeah, this up. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, no, go ahead and finish your thought. I didn't mean to interrupt. Well, it. just, I think <laughs> the money will work itself out. I think one of the great things, Judith asked about the poor, one of the great things when I'm down in front of Judge okay, they, now they, run is, they run <laughs> that as an enterprise fund, and, and it costs so much more for people to go down there than here. That I love it that the costs are lower here and we can control them. Okay, all right, thank you. Who else? We, we don't have time for that much longer if we're going to stick to our schedule. So who else has some Well, I just want to, well, I was, I want to state the obvious, which is there are people in the subcommittee who have been thinking about this and researching it, like sure. you, sure. for months. So you're not going to hear the end of this. This will, <laughs> We'll keep having the conversation, and you know, we have people have strong feelings about it, and lots of information and evidence that you know, you're doing your own research. And I think we welcome you know, we welcome having this dialogue and continuing the conversation. And I realized that there were, there's a big change afoot here with Dave retiring and me coming on board. And it's a, I know the village, many in the village government have been saying, oh, changes are coming, changes are coming. We're just waiting until January 1st. So I, and, and I'm waiting for my state training too. Everything I've been doing, I've been doing on my own in informal conversations here. So. I, and Laura brings up some excellent points, and you know, those are questions I'll be asking when I go to Columbus. Dave, you had something? Yeah, I think, you know, and when we met the last time in our subcommittee, you know, Pam was there, and we were talking about you know, a lot of these kinds of things. And in general, you know, I think it's clear that looking at the whole process to see how we can, you know, we can improve it, including diversion in particular, you know, would be a good thing to do. What specifically needs to be done to do those things is downstream. But you know, clearly, I haven't, I haven't heard anybody saying, oh no, we like the old light bulb. Right. Uh, right. We're not going to change my guy. Let's get rid of the buggy one, right? Yeah. Do you guys have a program that you're using to manage citations and whatnot, a computer program? There is a program. Okay. And, and it is, it's here how much it's being utilized, I can't really say. I do hear that well, there's a typewriter somewhere. <laughs> right. You're talking about for the court. Yeah. Yes, there is a program that will be used. Can All right. Time to yeah, yes, it will. Okay, anything else? Anything for else I can do for the pleasure of the group? Thank you Thanks for coming. Thanks for oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for your work, too.
It's been great reading your reports and helps me get some direction. And I'm sure there'll be more. Thank you. Take care, Thanks. Later. Okay, we're on to the um, Facebook post follow up. And I think there it's up to John or Dave to let us know where, where that issue stands. Well, we met with uh, Janet and I think we had a good conversation, worked a lot of things out. I'm feeling much better. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Anything else you want to say other than that? Uh, um, so, I did. Okay, um, so, um, obviously, the, uh, reasons why, why the post was written were pr primarily connected to, to uh, the election and um, political considerations. But, you know, I, I also recognize that all of us here are, you know, human beings, actual individuals, um, even people, even candidates for public office are, are people, <laughs> um, and who, who have feelings, and, and that, that matters also. And um, I'm really sorry to, uh, that, that, I, that I hurt Dave and um, that have uh, caused people distress in, in the situation. Oh, uh, I also, um, I tend to smile and, and giggle just like pretty much constantly. I remember in high school at one point just walking down the, the hallway like being like, oh man, I hate school. And someone's like, <laughs> what? And someone, someone stops me and they're like, so, so why are you smiling? I'm like, I'm smiling? I, I, like, I didn't even... It's like just my face. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, uh, is there anything else we have to do on this topic? I mean, my preference is to, you know, if you guys are, if it's settled, it's settled, and we should move on. Yeah. That's my thing. Anything else? Does anybody? Okay. All right. Terrific. Excellent. Uh, then let's talk about the right state citations and right right state citations and warning reports. It's not actually about right state. Uh, right state. <laughs> and um, just to remind everybody sort of the state of play on this particular item, we did vote at our last meeting to send this on to council. Uh, but then, then Al did some really interesting F of work uh, analyzing the data in a different way and looking at different numbers and whatnot. And so we want to you know, res respect Al's work and see if there's some stuff we can learn from that as well. So I don't know exactly how to manage this conversation, but here's what I would suggest. Tell me, let people tell me if they, and then Dave and Cindy also weighed in with some caveats about or, uh, the reservations about the data. Uh, so here's what I would suggest. Uh, I would like to give Al a couple of minutes to highlight the issues that he uh, found or you know, uncovered in, in his analysis. I'd like to give John a couple of seconds, <laughs> so he gets minutes, you get seconds, to, uh, to uh, you know, to have a rejoinder, if you will. Uh, and then Pat has some interesting, uh, she tried to create a little matrix of like, sort of like, what could we, have, what did we learn from this overall situation? That if, after this, the land will change, then we'll go through Pat's matrix, and then hopefully we'll feel comfortable moving forward. Does that seem like a reasonable way to go? Can I just say, you know, one of the questions is, I mean, council's got it on their agenda for Monday, right. reporting out on this. And I don't know if people saw uh, Mike Bottomley sent some clarifications. Yeah. Uh, if you had time to read it, I sent it this morning. Um, and I know uh, Karen, at least at this point, unless we suggest something differently, I can tell her that. She, and I don't know if Mike Bottomley can come, but she would like him to come to council and explain his report. So, can we comment on that, or should we wait till the election? Well, I'm coming to come. Well, I think that should be. Let's part do that. Of that. Like, we'll save for like, you know, eight okay. minutes for that piece of it. Like, you know, moving forward. How, how does that go? Go? Okay. Yeah. So, if, if people are comfortable, Al, go ahead. What well, I have, I think I've seen the packet 
there's a report. I, I misspelled hemp ling, uh, and, and I was embarrassed about that. So this has got the correct spelling. I, if you want to, uh, and there may have been some minor change, uh, changes, but in that report, and this is a, these are the spreadsheets that I think this is pretty much the same as the, the spreadsheet that was in the, uh, in the original one. But uh, the, the two things, I just wanted to make a, a couple points before we uh, move on. My, the, my major, uh, basically, my conclusion is consistent with, with, um, with what John says. I mean, basically, coming out the same way. I, I have some real concerns about the some, some of the things that John and Wright State did in their analysis, the one thing that I'm really concerned about are, are the census data that he used. He, the, they use the, what are called the, Ameri what's it, ACS, American? The American Community Survey. Yeah, the, and, and if you look at this sheet that I just passed out, if you look at the ACS estimate that J John used for 2010, and compare that with the USA decennial census for 2010, there's extraordinary differences between them. The, I, as I, I tried to see how they do that ACS, it's an estimate. I think they call a few people and then they, they, they do this annually. Well, these things are vastly different. You can see the African American uh, 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 composition is, is uh, significantly lower in the ACS than they are in the decennial ones. I think the, those statistics that they use, those ACS estimates, are, should, are really, really suspicious and uh, are not anywhere near as accurate as the decennial one. And that throws, uh, that is of some concern. The other concern that I have is that uh, Basically, those of, that are African American but list themselves as African American, Native American, or African American white are are, are just uh, are not included in the. And I think when the police officer stops someone, if they're mixed African American, they're likely to be identified as African American. So I think the more a uh, correct way to uh, to do the analysis is to include African Americans that whether they are alone, whether they just list themselves as African American or African American mixed should be considered together. Now it doesn't make much difference, but it changes the the, the what I call the disparity ratio. John on it when it on his post listed 1.47, I think, as a disparity ratio. Uh, then it was corrected in the report that we approved to 1.39. Then that was only for a very small number of citations, less than 20% of the citations. I took, decided that in order to get a bigger sample, I'd look at all of them. And basically, if you look at all 4,791 citations, the disparity ratio is virtually identical to the residents. Uh, so that's not a big factor. Now, if you uh, if you take and uh, put, throw in the African American uh, and include those African Americans that select by racial, it will lower that disparity ratio to 1.31. Not, but the conclusion ultimately is that there is bias in giving citations. The other thing I was really concerned about was. What is the effect of if we have a few officers that are really uh, 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 have a, a grave implicit bias uh, thing, does that uh, change the data? So if you throw out the seven that give the most, um, cite the African Americans with the highest percent, it actually lowers it to 1.17. But of course you can't throw out just those that give the uh, at the highest, uh, so if you throw out the seven officers that give the highest number to African Americans and seven that give the lowest, 
uh, number to African Americans, and then it lowers that disparity ratio of 1.27. But the conclusion, oh, the other thing I want to say is I, I was concerned about whether uh, we've gotten better or worse. If you look at the disparity ratio for those officers that issued a citation in 2016, meaning that they've been on the force more recently, you actually, the, the disparity ratio goes up, meaning that things are actually perhaps worse with the present officers than they were over the 10 to 16 total time frame. I, I've made many efforts to get the data for 2017 from the chief to, because I would like to see what is happening since the, the ball drop and since the officers were fired, I have not been able to get the data from him. I think that would be important to, for us to help the police to see what's happening. Are things getting better? Are they getting worse? What is responsible? I, I, I'm uncomfortable with just saying 1.47 or 1.39 or, or whatever. And I don't think that is going to help uh, improve the situation. So, but basically, my conclusion is what John is, that there is a bias against African Americans. There's a bias against males. There's a bias against young people. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the officers are, um, are singling them out of that because May, the t testosterone effect, you know, causes males to be a little more unruly, and uh, young people haven't had the experience and all to, uh, and they, so they're more likely to get things. Also, you have to be careful in the race thing that you, it, it, that poverty is, um, economic status is a factor in, in citations. Uh, and so you have to be very careful to jump to conclusions. And I, so I think we have to be, that was my concern, and that we were just putting out the number. And uh, my intention has never been to protect the police, as was the implication in, in the post. And uh, I, uh, I just think we need to give them some report that they can it would be more helpful to them. So that's all I want to say. All right, thank you. I appreciate that. Don, do you want to then, you know, yes. brief, brief yes. Yes. Okay. reply, since um, you so, wrote up a reply. All right. Uh, so um, my response is very close to the very back of your packet. It starts here. This is your back of your packet. This is where it starts. Um, so, uh, in terms of the um, concern about the use of the American Community Survey, um, basically, uh, so the, the numbers that he cited there for ACS uh, 2015, that's um, actually the results of 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, and 2015 combined. Likewise, the AC 2010 is 2006 through 2010 combined. Um, and, I mean, basically, if you look at the census's own website, um, and I mean, this is, was also the conclusion of Mike Bottomley and, and, and uh, Beth Crandall also. It just seems like the correct um, estimate to use because it was information about the time period under study. Uh, and then um, in terms of you know, combining different like mix with African American for the comparison purposes, it just seems uh, it seems less neutral than just taking the officer's designation at face value. Um, and then also, it seems like it might mask uh, a specifically anti-black, um, any, any disparity that was particular to black residents with MB and whatnot. Um, but I feel like the, the main meat of my response to, my, to um, Alice's uh, piece is really um, this sort of example argument for the, uh, the report being understated, um, and which uh, starts on page 
page four, um, which, uh, you know, I'm, I'm being, I'm not necessarily endorsing this, this argument, um, but basically, if one's going to argue that, as I, I feel like some people were arguing at the um, October meeting, that uh, the report is somewhat unfair because it includes people that were, that have since left the department because it includes years that have since passed, then um, it would seem that this, you know, com that specifically focusing, for example, as this argument does, on the 2013 to 2016 window, and then looking just at the officers that were current as of 12-31-16, um, and excluding Howley and Sauber, um, would be uh, like a, a reasonable argument. And um, as I was sort of making this argument, I basically began to convince myself that like it would be reasonable for us to do more research and possibly statistical testing in this area, uh, because it's just so striking. The I mean, both of these, <coughs> the set of officers that have since left, um, that set of people during that time period, versus the, the set of officers that are still here. I mean, the set of number of people that they cited um, uh, for both sets are both like pretty large, almost almost about equal, um, total of 170 people versus 139 for the people that have since left. Um, and yet, the disparity is um, so much higher for the officers that are that are still here, um, with 24.2% uh, of the subjects that they cited being black, as opposed to 15% for the officers that had left, and uh, the white things. I mean, I'm sorry, for those of you that have already read the report. I don't, um, so yeah, John, I want you to summarize. Tomorrow. Summarize. Yeah. I am totally open. For those who are like, I feel like the most reasonable direction to go with this is to say, yes, this is an exploratory study that I think, you know, meets the, meets the standard of, of um, diligence for what it is. And if people want to do more research in particular areas on, on the same analysis, getting the data and cleaning it is the largest part of the work. Doing more analysis is like less work than what's been done so far. Um, so I'm totally open to doing more. Uh, right. I guess I'll just leave it. <laughs> oh no, wait. <laughs> oh, but there's more. <laughs> but there's more. But there's more. Um, I should also note, in terms of this, like, concern about the mixed people. If you look at the citations by year, you'll notice on a uh, page three of my response, you'll uh, you'll notice that um, a mixed person is not cited until 2013. So between 2010 and 2012, just zero mixed people were cited, which results in the number of mixed people in the, in the report being really low, even though it kind of normalizes in, in 2013. Of course, the number of the population is really low anyway, um, but it's part of what you're, I feel like how Al manages to get numbers that are somewhat less than 1.39 is primarily by both um, by basically trying to in increase the number of uh, mixed people in the village and then arguing that you should combine the mixed and African American um, uh, numbers into one group. And that's how you can sort of manage to dilute the number of uh, black res the number of black residents, sort of people of color residents that are being cited relative to the population. If that, if that makes sense. So I feel like there's a couple different steps and presumptions that are needed in order to achieve that result. Okay. Um, all right, now I, I don't want us to fall into sort of like a pit of statistical yeah. conversation here. I mean, we, you know, that's probably something better done either over beer or in a classroom somewhere. Um, have pe did people get a chance to read Mike Bodenley's uh, December 11th memo, the one that just got circulated maybe yesterday? Because I found this personally rather instructive. I mean, he's the guy that actually did the, the data analysis, and really what he's saying to us is, this is a, um, it's an exploratory study, you know? It's not a, it, it's not a uh, double-blind, uh, you know, um, test. 
because you just, it, you know, and anytime you're working with real world data, like police data, there are going to be problems with the data, and you just do the best you can, and you try not to overclaim for what you figure out when you work with this data. And I mean, that's what I think he's preaching at us here, and I think, you know, we, we do well to sort of take that to heart, um, that, you know, it is what it is. And we shouldn't try to present it as more than what it is, but nor should we pretend like it's less than what it is. It's a good faith effort to take the data that's available with all of its flaws and, you know, see if it, it says anything. Um, with that, are people comfortable trying to talk about Pat's matrix? And did, did, have people seen this? This is sort of an effort to, seen this. for us to draw out maybe what lessons we can... It, no, oh. I did not see this. Passed it along. And this is, I, I want to say that this is not necessarily complete. It's just I was, as a person who's not all that sophisticated about the statistical analysis, looking at this pile of uh, reports and critiques, I was trying to um, summarize for myself. And again, it's probably not. So we're at the place where we have already voted to bring this forward, and we actually had a sort of command that we would bring it forward on Monday. There's an expectation that it will come forward. So I thought it would be useful for us to just step back a minute and think about the framing and some reminders. Um, so in terms of under the process, we agree, or I think we agree, we started this because, remember the old six pillars, seven pillars? Okay, one critical one is that trust and legitimacy with the police depends on transparency. And that's what kicked off John saying, oh, I'll, I'll look at records. And that's something that is widespread right now in police reform. In fact, there's no police reform that doesn't do this. <coughs> so we feel that this is a useful activity that we're learning how to do. I mean, obviously we're learning. We've come into a number of bumps and things. And as people have already said, and as Bottomley said, this is exploratory. So we're not, the conclusions are not like, we're not coming automatically to a conclusion about the racism of the police or anything else. The interpretation, it doesn't provide interpretations. What it does is show you concerning relationships that then would point us to further research, as John has said. It would, it would say, we want to know why this is happening, or are certain officers doing it more than others, or exactly why are they stopping people? So the study itself, and I think we need to frame that for the council, is what it is. It's an exploratory study, and it points us to things of concern. There are three findings of concern. But we don't have interpretations. They raise all these questions for us. But they should be raising questions for the community and the police department. I mean, all of us are learning about this and about how important. And so the purpose of doing this data analysis project was learning how to do the analysis well. And of course, John was our sacrificial lamb and our yeoman laborer. And I mean, he certainly has, we're all trying to catch up with things that he's learned. Um, but we do agree that over the time period, the findings show us that the police department did focus greater attention on some age, gender, and race groups than others. So that's a finding that's there. Now there may be some other things we agree about, but I think we want to keep that framing that as a task force, we understand the significance of transparency. And the way to do that is data analysis. And we're trying to figure out how to do it and how to do it well. Um, so then the next column, I was just trying to catch, and I don't think I necessarily got them all, but some of the things that Cindy, Al, Dave, and, and John all brought up, that there are questions, like we don't have officer identifications, or we did in the original. We don't know about certain officers over time. And race is not always noted. And you can go down the list, and there's probably some things that are um, not in there that are still questions. And to me, those are the things for the future. Because we, we're not stopping. I don't see a stopping here. 
doesn't make sense that we would stop here. I think we'll have to keep going. So to keep going, we have to look at the data questions, the lessons learned, our disagreements. We have some disagreements and whether or not they, um, I assume they can resolve them at some level. Um, but again, we're learning. And we did do some lessons learned. I mean, John put forward some lessons learned, and everybody's put forward some lessons learned about things like let's have less jargon in the report we give to the public, and so on. Um, so I think we're we're actually doing great, really. You know, if you stop and think about it. We're actually doing great. We've got. Um, you know, good understanding, and we need to keep stepping back and saying, we're not yet at a place where we're going to do conclusions and interpretations. We're pointing out that we've done this study, and it shows us some things that concern us. I'll use young people as a less volatile example. We see that young people are being, having more warnings and citations. Well, that raises a whole bunch of questions, doesn't it? I mean, and so it's the questions that we want to get to next. And those questions can either be, they'll partly be in our conversations and discussions, and partly in the next level of research. So I just wanted to, for myself, and I hope for everyone to sort of say, let's, let's, there are some of us who are more educated and sophisticated about the data analysis and are coming up with things. And I think those things are really significant, but they shouldn't get in the way of us putting this out next week and finding ways of framing it to the council and to the community that doesn't cause this kind of conclusion. Oh, we're showing that the police are racist. No, that isn't really what we're showing. We're showing there's a problem. I mean, when I talked to Chief, you know, to Brian, he said, oh, well, no surprise. And I think, you know, any sort of African American person would say, well, no surprise. You know, it's not that, that any of these conclusions are shocking. So they just lead to the next level of questions. How do we interrupt this? Or how do we understand this? What does this really mean? Can I share one lesson that I, I've learned? I think when we started off, we divided into subgroups. And we had several people working together in subgroups. Uh -huh. And my experience with the, uh, with the mayor's court is it was a, a discussion, the compromise of the in my opinion, mistake was, and it was as much my mistake as John's, John went off on his own and did this thing, and the, he, he, he engaged Wright State, and we paid them some money to do it. That was, that was the, the lesson I learned, is that John, I should have said, John, I'd like to work with you on that, uh, and let's not get Wright State involved. We, we've got resources in town to do this. We should have gone at this as a committee. I voted to approve it. I didn't think we had any other choice last meeting because it had been put out on the on the uh, on the post and, and there were people in town that knew about it. I mean so if we had said no we're not going to uh, to publicize it now it, it then it's more looks more like cover up. We had no choice. Yeah. But if it had been a group effort and that the group well, it was a group effort. Then it would have been it was a group effort at, at some level. Our, our police working group, and that's Kate and myself and Bill, and we had conversations oh, about okay. it. So he was that. not totally on his own, although he was alone a lot. Okay. I, I just want to add one more thing, which is this um, kind of front piece uh, that is in the packet, which was drafted by um, Beth Crandall, who also has worked very closely with John and has a lot of skill and you know, background in this work. Um, so she and I drafted this as a sort of non, as much as we could, non-jargon piece that I think would be useful for going to the council along with. I think one thing we have What's to What's the headline on there? It's because it, it shows Williams up here. I think state analysis of police warnings and citations, November 9, 2017. Okay, 2017. What's the first line? First line is overview. Why analyze police data? Oh, it's smaller. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. yeah. Yes. So, I mean, one question for us is, wh how much of this stuff do we give to council? And that I think circles back around to whether or not we want Autumnly, who is you know, going to be using this language, to be the person to talk. I don't know. I don't know if that's fine. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I, um, 
so I saw the request, uh, and Ellis told me last night uh, that there had been this request to have him come to the council meeting. Um, and then, and then I received that. I talked to him about coming here because I thought maybe that would. And by the way, I think one of our one of the lessons learned is if somebody writes a report, they should come and explain it. I, I feel like it was a mistake that we didn't have him come initially to, you know, to explain it. I think that could have been helpful. But anyway, he couldn't come tonight, and I think it's, it seems to be fine to me. Um, I do think what he wrote was helpful, and so. I don't know that he has to come to count. I think if we say to Karen, uh, actually, this is what we would prefer to do. I think she will listen. Uh, if we make, it, if it sounds like a good enough argument, she'll say fine. And I don't know if he can come. I have not asked him yet because I thought I didn't want to make that decision. I thought the committee should decide how best to bring it to council. Well, we're not making a recommendation. We're saying here's something we think is important for the police department and others to consider, right? Right. Well, we're also saying you paid for this report. Here's the product. Yeah, I uh, think but, we but, should. But there isn't a. Now we're expecting you to do some. This is no. We're just presenting. No. Right. Okay. I mean, I think council will want the report itself to be there, but I think if, if Pat, I don't know, I think John should play a role just because he's put so much work into it. Um, that the two of you kind of leading, you know, bringing your reports, however, I mean, you might want to talk well, together. Well, probably be willing yeah. to do that. And, 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 then, and then Mike Bottomley's letter today, I think, should go in, or the letter that I sent out to you today. I got it yesterday, but I didn't get it out to you until today. I, right. As a, and I think the way it's, you know, that I think that should be a good way to bring it. Not right now. Um. Al, do you, would you like to see your uh, study included in the, in the, you know, as a um, work paper? Yeah. I don't know. I, don't, I, I, I'm, I need to think about that. I, um, um, I don't think I would, I'm certainly not going to give all this stuff, but I think I need, I may need, feel the need to give a minority uh, position or something. Uh, well, but, I mean, I personally would be in favor of including what you, what I've seen that you wrote up, your your report as a work paper, something that if you want to dig deeper, here's some further analysis, some more things to think about, and there it is right there. You know, and then we could also include John's rejoinder to it. And I mean, you know, I mean, honestly, people have varying varying levels of interest and desire to dig into numbers, right? And so for those that want to look at it, let's give them everything. But I, I think the constant. My argument is that. This report is is not going to be meaningful to the council. It's too. Uh, it, 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 the report to the council should be a, a summary of just the high points of it, and and not statistical analysis. Well, that's what this is. Yeah, no, yeah, that's what this is. That, 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 yeah, but that, that's, that's what I'm saying. Example. Maybe give them that, but not the. Well, they paid for the report, so they would want the full. Well, report. I mean, it's <laughs> got to be available. Nobody, they, maybe they would never read it, but. Well, I think both of them need to go. A, the, the, the simple explanation and here's the data that goes along with it and there are various the aspects of it that different people have done and you can take the, all of these different you know, analyses, make of it what you will. Okay. I mean, what, what you were saying, putting this, putting this together is you know, very helpful, you know, and, and talking about it being exploratory, lots of things to look at. It's not definitive, but it's a guide. You know, I see, I and that we want to keep going. I think the, our message to the council is this is our first you know, uh, step out there in terms of transparency, which is critical to a police reform. And we want to keep going. Well, I, I also wanted to say, I'd see, see this, others have said various versions of this at different pieces. It's a start of a conversation that the police would be having and others about bias and a guide to determine how to better track data as well. Uh, right. I think that's critical. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, what can we learn that for the police to be collecting or working with in the future? And, okay, so I, I want to try to bring this together here because we, we don't have that much longer for this conversation. We can go longer, but we don't need to. I'm trying to hold us to the yeah. time amount, the amount of time that we have. And we're 50 minutes ahead of schedule, people. It's good news. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, I mean, um, I guess I'd, I'd like to hear more from those who um, have 
you know, concerns about the report and, uh, I think you know, we're well past that. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. My feeling is the concerns and questions that have been brought up are, that's sort of like the feedback about what has to be looked at next. Yeah. I mean, like, honestly, it's because of, you know, what Cindy said about, and, and also, you know, getting emails from, from Al that looking, that I looked at the officers that, I don't want to say currently work at the department because, of course, there's been turnover, but are, are more current than the other officers in the data. And, you know, it was Alice's idea, like, to get a year-by-year -year breakdown. And I think that these things were, were useful. And they were ignored when I brought them up. They were ridiculed in the open meeting, and they were not addressed at all until Al put a lot of time and effort into it. Well, part of the problem, I think, is that we've got imperfect data, and exactly. we, and, and, and we have to just accept it imperfect data and try to come up with a precise quantification of something is a fool's error. So continuing to do that would not be profitable. You know, what we have to do is say, there's a lot, we're, we're going, this is pushing us in a direction, let's you know, stop doing the analysis you know, uh, to find a bad answer. Because we're, you know, we can find all the answers we want. We've got a good general idea, but not a precise piece of information. So and you guys, we, and we, we don't, we don't, we don't need more precision. So you guys don't think that those dimensions? Because I was going to suggest, you know, looking deeper at those, doing a statistical analysis along along those dimensions. You guys didn't, because you guys brought up those dimensions. Yeah, I mean, you guys don't actually have an interest in looking for the future. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like yeah. bringing back a proposal to maybe do some more research yeah. in that area. You know, honestly, I, I, I always thought that what we were doing is we were going to get some ideas here. Okay. And that this is not going to be a scientifically precise, okay. you know, you know, uh, just dissection of everything going on. I don't think you can do it with a small police department right. and small numbers. That's when right. you start breaking it down by year, your sample size becomes so small. When you start breaking it down by officer, the sample size is so small, I don't know how you say anything about those small Sections. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you know, officer so, is too small. I agree yeah. with that. Officer is too small, and maybe there's a way to do it over looking at time sort of continuously versus specifically each year. But one of the good, the thing is, is that a lot of the, um, uh, people were really critical of all the unknowns in the data, but they, they are kind of mostly constrained to 2010 and 2011. And so looking at more recent data, it, sort of clarifies its life. But wouldn't you rather spend our time working with the chief to say, hey, chief, this suggests something. Let's talk about you know, what you can be doing, what kind of data we can be collecting in order to, going forward, have a better sense about whether this problem is continuing to manifest itself and trying to nip it in, you know, stop it. Uh, I mean, that's where I'd like to see its focus rather than trying to, like, you know, just right. dig into the data that we have. Well, this I is mean, one thing, yeah. but one thing uh, is, hasn't a, stu a student looked at, I mean, there is some another piece that has been looked at. Oh, ah, yes, correct? so for the so non-residents, sure that will still be yeah. coming in. Yeah, the, for the non-residents. Yeah. yeah, there's no baseline there to compare it against, but you'll just be looking at it. Raw numbers. Um, it's uh, basically the average number of citations each person, each out of town or received. And then, you know, break, broken down by demographics. So, like, black out of towners received this many citations on average. There were this many of them. But there's no, there's no baseline to compare it to. As Al said, as it turns out, their demographics happen to be very, seem to, the demographics of those that were cited that were from out of town are really similar to the demographics of people that were cited that were from in town, which is useful to know that there's not, like, a big difference there. Well, okay, let's talk about I would it. like to suggest that yeah. the presentation be best overview. And here's the overview, and here's all the analysis so far. <laughs> okay. And there is a plan then to continue to look further through any kind of more you know, details analysis and investigations. You're talking about considering the kind of things that you know, we came up with here and various members of the set. And we present that to council and then move on from there because I don't think we're going to be able to do much more with this. Okay. Do you think Bottomley needs to be there then? Well, I would say no. I would no. say that you say no for sure. Okay. And then I do have one other question. So we're going to do it to the future, but who's doing it? I mean, is the police, I mean, how how is this done over time? I mean, we don't have a, you know. Right. 
I know Beth was very interested. She's really all about collecting data for managing police activities into the future. I mean, she's very much focused on that. That would be uh, the so, firm's next task, I would think. You know, take the experience here and the data and work with the police now and, and start working more closely with the police and everywhere else to determine the next way to go. We've learned a lot. So we're going to say to council, we're still thinking about what the next step should be. Yeah. We haven't actually. I'd like us to involve the chief in the next step. Yeah. I mean, you know, of course. We're, it's, this data is talking about his department, and it'd be great to have him sit down. But he's got some really good ideas. Well, do you think council will have a direction that they want? Yeah, I was just trying to think about whether council's yeah. going to be asking yeah. for something further. and. Can I make a suggestion? Sure. Um, we need a, a solid citizen review board. You know, if, if we've identified that there is, you know, racial bias, we need we need to find out more details about that, and we need to really dig into the numbers, and we need to dig into the the, the trends, and we need to, to have a citizen review board that's that does more than just this this group is able to do. Uh. That, that reminds me. Um, so one of the uh, lessons learned was um, actually something that hasn't happened yet, which is uh, to request from the department um, all of the fields associated with the data. I'm pretty sure that I, I've asked for this, but I haven't gotten it. And so um, I was wondering if the task force would support me in asking for that again. Uh, it's possible that there's information in there, like whether or not the person was arrested or whether or not or um, which court the citation was sent to um, that I just didn't know to request because <clears throat> you sort of have to sort of guess, well, I think that maybe you have this information and then they either give it to you or they say they don't have it. We have actually two next steps. One of them is how do we, how do we structure the conversations with the community and with the police department mm -hmm. about we have this finding, what are the questions that come up for you as a department? as a council, as a community, what are the questions that need to be examined? Uh, again, I'll work with the young people because it's a little less volatile. You know, do we want to know why are they getting citations? Are they doing graffiti all over town? Or are they speeding all over town? Or are they, you know, I mean, what are the questions that are going to come up from these findings? That's, that's, another, that's a next step. And then the other next step is that whoever, whichever people want to work on, how do we go take the next step in our data analysis, which is what you're talking about. That's mm -hmm. a second next step. Right. And that okay. might be a new, some new configuration, Al and John or whatever. And the one thing that I can almost promise you guys is that probably at our January meeting, uh, I'll be able to bring that, those uh, breakdowns, not anything demographic, but like what, this, what people are being cited for, that, that information. Mm -hmm. Well, and I had mentioned to, and I mentioned to Al, and I do believe they are on those fields, uh, which court they go to, and you know, I was saying to Al, I felt like it would be good to know 2016 and 2017, you know, since you know, to be able to see by month where things are going because the chief has asked, you know, the department to send what can come to mayor's court to mayor's court, and what's going on with that, we don't really know. Where are we now? Because the where are we now? So I was. So if that is one of the things, I'm pretty sure it is one of the things on the field. And so you know, for us to get that would be useful. Al, but I, you know, were talking about next steps, which I think is a good thing to talk about. It seems to me before before it's pre the council reacts to this, it would be a courtesy to, to present it to the chief and and have uh, yeah. have have a, a, a group pad or <coughs> someone. Uh, or a John and Pat, or someone meet with the chief and share with him, yeah, and so that has. there's no surprises, and that, and then be an appropriate time to find out from him what more we could get and uh, what what he sees yeah. as the next step. I agree, and he, he does have most. I mean, he certainly has the thing that Beth and I did, and he has I don't know what what all he has, but he knows that he understands the concerning findings. He's heard that. Yeah. So he's open to whatever next. But, but did, I have a question. Well, this, hand, this, this committee is accountable to the council, right? Not the police. Do. Is that correct? 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay so, so the report should go to the council. Before yes. Yeah. Not, not to the yeah. I mean, obviously, you want to consult the police. But yeah. <coughs> was, was there anyone else around the table that had a comment? I think that coming up with next steps would be better done at another meeting. Okay. Right. Well, do we want to invite the chief to come to our next? meeting to you know kind of get his take on this and begin sort of a substantive conversation about what does it mean and how might i do respond and yeah. variety of arenas i mean i think this is a perfect forum to do that and uh, you know it's not adversarial i don't know why yeah. i think you'd be comfortable oh, yeah. well also i mean i think and i've said this about some other things that you know one of our in our charge we're in there's an intention that we communicate with the public about some of the things we're doing and I don't think you know we get overwhelmed with what we're doing we haven't really done much of that right. how you know is this something worth doing with the public in some way or advertising a meeting with the chief and the public so that there's more how about a meeting first with the chief here and then coming out of that a meeting with the public and the chief or an article in the old springs news or something people be comfortable with that approach a separate, I mean, it's going to be discussed at council, which is a right. public meeting, right. and um, I guess I don't see a public, a, a separate public meeting. I don't. Okay. Maybe, maybe there's a reason, but I don't know. Well, maybe we just need to think, not maybe even not right now, but what does it mean in our charge that we're communicating with the public? Because we haven't really. Well, but, I, I mean, when you say. I mean, I want to. I want to. Excuse me. I mean, you know, but so we're gonna we're gonna give uh, the summary that we've prepared to the council and basically all, all the other. work papers. You know, this is an all you can eat buffet. Uh, and uh, and our committee is gonna have to reform itself. It sounds like. I mean, are you guys up for that to talk about any future possible analysis and 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 the whole data going forward question that Beth likes to talk about? Is that reasonable? Okay, and and we will invite the chief to our next meeting. Yeah, I think the discussion of all of those things should take place at the next meeting. Plus, somebody, you guys, taking it to him and saying we're going to present this next week. Yeah. Yeah. So is that are those sort of the three things that we're going to do? Here? Okay. So I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Do are we okay? Are we, are we comfortable with that? I, yes. I don't maybe this question, man. Kind of silly. Oh, but does does <laughs> does the police department keep their own stats? Do they keep their own stats? Um, yes or no? Not really. As far as I can tell, you could ask them if they actually produce any statistics so when, for so, internal consumption. So at end of year, at end of year, mm -hmm. they should they should they should have stats <laughs> refined everything that's done that somebody can walk in and review. Do they have that? Well, I know when I spoke to Chief Hale, the previous chief, he said, oh, it's such a small department, we just sit down and talk about what we've done. What we've done. But if that may not be the practice now. It may be. Then if that's not the case, that should be the case, because yeah, they should sure. be able, you should be able to go right. in. I mean, we were not a large department, but we did it. I know we did it, because I did it. Sure. <laughs> So it should be able, you should be able to go in year to year and pull up, however, right. what the analysis is, what happened, citations, break, you know, whatever, violations, etc., warnings, etc., 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 that should already be in place. If, it's not, if, they, if they're not doing that, then they need to start doing it. I think that's a good recommendation yeah. for them coming out of this. this okay. experience. Well, it's not that felt like we did that. And that's certainly, I mean, we can suggest the type of data also, the specific, you know, maybe we want them to keep some relationship type, relationship type data if we in there as well. With, if we meet with Chief on in the January meeting, yeah. then we can bring that up to yeah, the Chief yeah. and, and find out he's doing it. He can use it. Okay, are we ready to move forward? I think we, I think everybody agrees with your thought. Um, and is your committee up to reforming? We're moving forward, John. Oh. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll say, I'll say yes. And, um, and, and do I have the committee's support for asking for the full list of what's in the data set so that for future requests we would not miss things that were clearly of interest? I, I have no problem because it seems that 
they may not have it themselves, and maybe they just need somebody to organize that for them. There. I, for, I, for me, I can't speak for everybody on the table. I would ask you to ask them, say the committee, the Justice System Task Force, wants to know what is available and what uh, I would, I have emails to him asking for the 2017 data that we don't have. So, um, well, he probably won't, you know, they, they won't have finally. No, they won't have final, but I mean, up, 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 up to date. Up, up to date, date is yeah. what I wanted to do. So, right. so, Judith, do you feel like you have what you need as far as taking this to council, et cetera? And Pat, you put a lot of time to try so to I'm, organize I will, this. And I will talk to this. Karen about, and I think we should have Bob Molly's thing in too. Yeah. And then yeah. Both letters of Bob Molly or just, just this last, last one? The last one, which I thought was a nice, yeah. pretty easy to understand. Mm -hmm. Pat, are you comfortable having put a lot of time into trying to make so you're going to present. Well, I, I thought probably Beth and John would present, but I'll talk to Jeff then. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, the I most of the work, so. I, I would recommend that, that you be part of the presentation. You have a good ability to uh, to summarize and to get to the uh, meat of it, and uh, I, I would. Okay. Well, uh, Beth and John and I will. Okay. I mean, probably about. ten minutes. Yeah. Can it be yeah. done in 10 minutes? I mean, we should have some kind of a time frame on it. So okay. And what's the date of that going to be? December 18th? I assume everybody's invited if they want to attend. More time for questions. What date was it? 18th. December 18th, That's right? That's Monday. That's it's Monday. Coming. <laughs> no, it is? Okay. <laughs> All right. Next item. Council resolution directing our work. And I didn't bring it along. But I guess that's so. I'm sorry. I, we, I was going to bring that with us. That, because the there's. Is it, oh, it is in I here. Did I put it in our charge oh, thing? Oh, the charge. Yeah. I wanted to put that back in because I think we need to look at it again coming into the new year. Now, next year, January, I'm probably going to come off as liaison. Um, I'm assuming I will. Uh, but um, I can't find it in here. It's one from the very back. Oh, where is it? That's it. It's the yeah. second from the last. I one. just wanted to oh, yeah. draw. Wait. Okay. Um, I wanted to draw attention to what the council had asked us to do, um, and because uh, it seems to me like I know we're, you know, we're at a place of transition with the mayor, the new mayor coming on. Um, uh, with some of, with work that we've already done, but then there's all there's also pieces that we haven't hardly touched, and you know, the, you know, the one that, and I don't know, maybe as a non liaison, I will stay involved on the the issue of the disparity impacts on pork because I care about that issue very much. I have talked to a couple of people about you know being part of that working group. Um, so anyway, I just feel like we should be relooking at this. So that was the main thing, not to discuss it tonight, but January I think we should. Be taking another look at what's been asked of us, or the committee should, I should say that way. Sort of starting starting at the now therefore this is all part. Well, the back, if you look at the second page, um, it's got very specific sort of issues. Yeah, so I mean, some of which we've already done. The role of the prosecutor in the mayor's court. Yeah, okay. New developments in municipal police and practices that address institutional racism. That's it. That could use. Some focus the ameliorating disparate impacts on the poor, uh, alternative municipal policing approaches to drug control. We haven't touched that one. Uh, talking about the police and youth, including educational programs, and then this best practices in supporting police community relationships. So, anyway, I think for, you know before the next meeting, people should be kind of thinking about what what their focus is going to be for the coming. Period. Um, I know Pat's kind of thinking about the future of the committee, you know, and so there's that question also. But that, but that actually, I mean, I assume council's going to make that a decision about um, how to go forward when this task force ends its work. The work is not going to be done that's been asked of us, clearly. So, and um, two years are up in September, right? Yeah, two years up in September. I mean, the committee could go, you know, could be established as a permanent committee. That's one option. And you're, you're, you're looking at some other options as well. So, okay. 
Right. Anything else on that item? All right, and now we're into the working groups. And why don't we start out with the, uh, the group that's going to talk about the police social worker? Because um, um, I know a fair amount of work has gone into that. We're going to have some things to look at it. Is this the one that I did? Do you like that? I'm pretty sure this is the one. <clears throat> Let's make sure we're all looking at the right thing. Oh, that's, that's, that's not the one. I can't remember if that's the one I heard. Sure. <laughs> um, one thing on the yeah. very back, is it? The council had a discussion. I, I'll give a little update. Council had a discussion at the last uh, meeting. Um, Chief has, um, so we made a recommendation uh, about a police social worker. Uh, Kate did a lot of work on that. Um, and then uh, council, when that recommendation was done, you know, we all shook our head yes and said, to, and uh, basically said to staff, bring us a recommendation. Um, that recommendation was brought to council. Well, we had a discussion a couple of meetings ago, or maybe a month ago, and then uh, Monday night. This is this this um, so it's no it's not being called a social worker. It's being called community outreach specialist. Council seems to Monday night was arguing or you know, Karen was saying we should make this an emergency legislation and actually make a decision at the next meeting, which is this coming Monday. I'm not for that as a member of the council. Just to say I'm in, uh, not. I don't know that we actually can legally make emergency legislation of something that's not a true emergency. So, um, but um, at the end of that discussion, Karen asked Brian Housh and I to meet with the chief and to kind of edit uh, the recommendation. And Pat's done some wordsmithing, which I don't know if this is it, which I thought it did improve it. I think the thing that's attached on the last page does not include your wordsmithing that you sent around uh, today. Um, yeah, yeah, I think that, I think that's it. Like, this is slightly different from the one that they've yeah, got. That's not it. No, So anyway, and then Kate's been still working with the chief on this as well. And uh, Brian and I are trying to have a conversation with one of the, the police social workers in Illinois, uh, you know, on the phone, and we also talked, he and I, about talking to Catherine Hitchcock and uh, Linda Radowski, who are both social workers who have been thinking about this issue, and um, so we're just looking for input, not another, the, we're not asking for a recommendation from the committee, I don't think that we're at that point, we're just asking for input, and Brian was going to try to be here, but he's not. Did, um, he, did he tell you, though, that... Um, Brian House is talking about now. Oh, okay. Sorry. Did um, Brian Carlson let you know though that he's already met with Linda Radowski and Catherine Hitchcock on this? We haven't like met with, with Chief Carlson. Car we have not met with Chief Carlson. This is for Brian and my, uh, for our uh, thinking about this. Okay. You know, before well, we this, is, this is my rewrite, <laughs> which the Chief has said he's happy with. The final page right. is your re rewrite? Yeah. It is. Okay. Thank yeah. you. And I could say that, um, you know, there were just some, based on council feedback, um, I removed or de-emphasized things that would, that sort of implied this person would do a lot of administrative work, because maybe they will, because everybody who falls into a small work group ends up answering the telephone and whatever, but didn't seem to really need to be in the job description. So the focus where you put is all of the duties that's required. Sorry? That's where you put all of the duties that's required. Exactly, right. So even then, I also try to manipulate a little bit of the, um, that this uh, community outreach person would not necessarily lead all of these public events, but they could work with the, they could be a department liaison and coordinate events with the chief of police, but they wouldn't be responsible for putting out a lot of public events. Those are two changes. Which he liked. He was yes, he was that. comfortable. He was very mm -hmm. comfortable with that. So. And so the thinking is still is that it's a part-time position. You see, yeah. it's 30 hours a week. You see there. That's a little bit more. But the other thing that was good about what the chief has done is he's found a way to have it come out of the police budget versus 
being an addition, so it doesn't conflate the budget, it stays within the budget. Because there are three positions, um, law enforcement officer positions, technically, um, and some people are concerned with that, one of those being used as a social worker, but the way that the chief had explained to me, and not at the meeting, unfortunately, was that one of those positions is actually used to be held by our task force person. So they were never in the rotation uh, of our community. So it's not like we'd lose right. a position. That position was always somewhere else anyways. But the money is there for that position. And he also did the whole 80-20 thing that we all know, you know, like 80% of police work is social type services and 20 is more like what you'd consider more police work. Um, so he really thinks that this will help a lot, and he's put tons of time into this. As far as, you know, I do feel like we're backtracking and repeating, so that's frustrating to me because we've already talked with all these people, and it's just, it's, I don't, I guess I'm confused about, and I've asked this so many times, I said, how far do you go to do a recommendation? You know, we did a recommendation and said, here are the next steps. And then I felt like it was like, okay, it's in their ball court. And they worked hard on it, you know. And he did ask me to come in for a couple of meetings. I met with, you know, I reported back every month to what was done. And so I, I just, I'm confused why we're back at the beginning, which is what it feels like to me. Yeah, I'm not sure much what more, you know, we need to do. I, I agree. I think it's just this looks good. <coughs> And I feel like council all that, I mean council has done a lot of emergency ordinances before that weren't emergencies. Um, the one the question I think the main question that uh, I'm thinking about is the applicant should possess experience and or education in the areas of social services and criminal justice. And you know, the question of whether this person should have a bachelor's degree in social work certainly comes to mind when one is coming from a recommendation of a police social work. Now in Illinois, they're all master's degree, I guess, or a lot of them are. Um, and, you know, requiring that for $20 an hour, when, you know, that wouldn't make any sense. But to have, uh, you know, a bachelor's degree required, um, I personally feel at this point, unless somebody convinces me differently, is a good idea. And it's probably something I'm going to be advocating for. I'm a and I don't say counseling. Sorry. Sorry, I mean a degree of counseling. Yeah, and maybe there's other work. there's and other things, but this doesn't say anything about any kind of uh, what? Uh, specific education, which to me is makes it is to me it's not a good idea. We want somebody who's strong enough in their in their <coughs> experience and education that they are going to be able to play the role that she's part of the role the chief wants them to play, which is to really influence the thinking of the police officers and um, to have that background and, you know, to be a fairly strong, you know, force within the department is the way I would see it. Because if it's an 80-20 and they're working, 80% of their work is to do with situations that are social service, then you want somebody who's really good. And you don't want, you know, personally, I don't think you want a new graduate. Uh, I think you want somebody with experience who, come, who can come in with some confidence, uh, that can play, play an associated leadership role in the department. That's the way I would see it. Well, if, let's say the changing of the line, applicants should possess blah, blah, blah experience and fill in that blank with whatever it is that educational level you think would be appropriate. Would the rest of it be just as good? Whether that person, whether that applicant's uh, education experience or uh, line was changed or not, I guess I'm not sure. <coughs> that's the, I mean, that's the first thing that I, that's the thing that I most have a concern so at. Let's say you get a PhD point, but, who wants to work for 21 bucks an hour yeah. you know, uh, well, and has lots of experience. Well, so yeah, saying to them, do this job, would that be then okay? I mean, just is, is like a this job description? Of you could say the ideal candidate would have a minimum bachelor's in counseling and or well, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was thinking of it sort of backwards, the, you know, oh. what, however you describe, you know, fill in the blank however you want yeah. uh, for the education, you know, educational experience and educational mm -hmm. level and experience level. No matter what you put in that line, isn't the rest of it what we want? 
Yes. Yeah, oh, I think so. So, so the only issue then for you, it sounds like, Judith, the, the main issue is that that's, they, my, main, that's my main issue. The rest yeah. of it's fine. So instead of talking about the whole thing, it's the applet, it's the what your education. That's what I'm thinking for. about. And I didn't know. I just wanted to take any yeah. input from the. Well, I thought he would, of course. I mean, I, I think a lot of it was assumed when I've discussed with him that obviously it's going to be some other with a bachelor's degree. I mean, so I did not say that at all. Yeah. In you just wanted to say I got to have a bachelor's well, degree. Well, I mean, yeah. what we had discussed, when I had discussed this with uh, Patty and Brian, um, we had decided, or not decided, but we had talked about the master's degree and didn't think that was necessary to have a master's degree, but someone with a bachelor's degree. I think that was. I Always someone was going to have a counseling or, or a social work degree. Although our officers have bachelor's degrees and they're doing this job right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, but I think more bachelor's, but, it, but right. so that's the only. No, they don't. I said like they you. don't. They have well, we're going to talk. We wanted to yeah. talk to someone who's done the job. Yeah. You know, to actually be able to have it given to back. Can we say like a minimum then? Yeah, that would probably be good line. I would say preferred. I mean, well, preferred a minimum de bachelor's minimum degree bachelor's. in the field of. So, I mean, they're not, a, you know, what I is mean, this? Or counseling. Field. But they're not actually no, doing counseling does it too. therapy or counseling. That yeah, is not their position. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah it's social work yeah. specifically, right? Like it's. But well, there was like, a reason he couldn't like say social work, work. Well, wasn't it? There was well, if you say social work, it's your credential with MSW, and there's nobody with an MSW who's going to take this job, so. You know, no, you can have BS and social work. But if it's a requirement of some NSW, then where are we? Is the problem? That's not a requirement, though. We would say a minimum of. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought, I thought that's what you were saying. You wanted a master's No, she's saying bachelor. She's oh, not saying okay. no. <laughs> a minimum. I mean, if someone has a master's degree, and I think you should say minimum. So people aren't like, well, I have okay. this. And, and then. Yeah. Uh, there are people that do get. Yeah, that's minimum. If you say minimum, but they have a degree in social work, then, then yeah. this is now done. And, and well, related field. I would say relating field. Thank you. But, yes, because it's not the thing is though, what the chief is wanting to do as well is this person's not just gonna come in and know everything. They're they're going to also have to do specific training just like the officers do. They're going to have to do all of those things and they don't so Catherine Hitchcock who you want to talk to, she doesn't have a degree in social work, she has a degree in counseling. She could easily do that job because she knows all the social services. I know a lot of people with counseling degrees who could easily do this job. Yeah, right. that's really, no, yeah. related field. It or doesn't, related yeah, field. because they work with people that work with the different, you know, are in these different services. They know what's available out there. I mean, Catherine and I worked on this on the HRC to do a whole database. She knows what's out there. I, don't, I think especially knowing this area, that's also another thing. But I'm sure that would be screened out in a way. I don't think someone's going to come here from... Uh, Chicago, you know, Probably. maybe maybe they will, but they won't have the knowledge of this area. So you'd have to weigh like, do they have the knowledge as a social worker, or do they have the knowledge of this area and the specific services that are available, and the specific services that our town needs? Well, it, sounds like, it sounds to me like you know, finding somebody not from around here would be a bad idea. Because yeah, because we have very specific. That's something that that you're doing needs. in the application. Review process. Yeah. Yeah. So I think what, what, what would the hiring process be about your committee? Yeah. yeah, I had asked the chief thinks or Here, jump into this thought that he would do a for twenty one bucks an hour. He would do a um, a hiring type thing with the um, village manager, and then maybe someone like Linda Radowski, someone who you know has a knowledge of this so, area here. I mean, that seems like that would add some real value to add some people with this sort of background to the hiring committee so that, you know, I mean, like, it seems like you would be a good member of this hiring committee. You seem to know a fair amount about this. Yeah. And I can't volunteer, Catherine. Then. <laughs> I, I have actually volunteered them before. But, um, but they do have an interest in this, and they do have an interest in the person. So what else can we do for this to help, that's, help if, with if this If there's nothing else, that's yeah. nice. Well, yeah. I mean, like, um, I guess I, I, so. So two things. Uh, one is, like, I mean, I guess I'm imagining that the person would, in fact, be a, a social worker would be doing social work, right? We're all, we're all on the same page there, because it's not necessarily super clear in here that they're not just referring people to the services. I, that was my question exactly, John. Yeah, it's like not clear to me at all. Yeah, because I mean, if 
if basically it's a, a relatively small portion of the population um, that, the, that the department is aware of um, causes a lot of um, problems in, in the community and a social worker was able to help that person with a uh, substance, substance abuse problem or mental health problem or um, yeah. help them you know, achieve some stability in, in some aspect of their life, uh, you know, assist in domestic situations. I mean, like, there's a, like a whole variety of, of uh, how to deal with, you know, creating an economic stability for that person. I mean, like, financial stability. There, there's a whole they're lot of things that are really they're not similar. They're not That's doing not really what they They are not being, we're not hiring a caseworker. They're, right? they're, they're more of a like connect the dots. But right. why not? And they have to know, it's, they have to know there's the not enough legal things for it. And there's not, it's never been done here before. <coughs> this is sort of like the pilot position. This is what the officers do now, trying to connect people to the different services. Right. That's but what I, the person Ideally, like, I mean, if you know that, like, basically what you need is Thank the caseworker for people. I'm not sure we know that, though. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I guess I thought that that was like the whole assumption when like the social worker idea was Well, gone. let's imagine, I mean, this, let's imagine the scenario. Let's imagine the scenario. There's uh, one of the homeless people hanging around downtown, maybe not so stable, and they start causing some kind of commotion. Right. Well, someone's going to call 911. So then it goes into the legal thing, and then the exactly. officer has to come. Exactly. And then when the officer interacts with that person and they determine that they haven't eaten for three days or whatever it is, they then can either go, you know, go back to this person and say, "What should we, you know, what 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 do we want to do as a next step?" And then that person, I think, what would, services are available? What, what are the services? And and that person might also follow up after the person is connected to the services, but they're not going to be the caseworker. They can. I guess, but in that same scenario, yeah. so somebody's causing a commotion down the road, uh, or they're having some problem that's kind of concerning people around them, right. so they call the police department. So, I mean, what I'm imagining, part of the job is the way I'm understanding it from talking to the chief, to some extent in this description, is that they're going to advise the police officer going out. They're not going out. Are they? Are they going, going out? So that's the yeah. question. Are they, they going out? Because if they are going out, that's, you know, because just referring them to another service, they're not going to come out and intervene in that situation, right? So that's, I think, you, Pat's idea of thinking about the, what are the scenarios and what's this person's role going to be is actually a good way of trying to think about, you know, this role. Yeah. And I do, it is an evolving, it's going to be an evolving, you know, when you're the first person that's doing something, it's not going to stay the same as the, you first imagined it probably. And it may evolve into something quite different. But we just, uh, so, but, but thinking about these kind of questions, mm -hmm. I, I think, think for that reason, to. it's a good idea not to try and be too definitive up front. Uh -huh. Because the, you know, as soon as right. that person shows up, the job is going to be different than whoever hired them than thought it was. Yeah. And it's it a, is because it's, it's, it's a pilot project. Yeah. yeah, and so, so I, think, I think we can, we can't, we shouldn't spend a whole lot of time trying to define too much because we can't. Uh, we need to bring somebody in and then, and then see what happens. You know? and, and she, yeah. and she and this all been supports it. it. Well, no, I mean, this hopefully would be a permanent thing. But, but I mean, this particular <coughs> um, Well, they're always on, what did, I always forget that word. They're like always on, what is it called? For probation. You know, probation. Probationary. Yeah. So, I mean, with just like any officer would yeah. be, a probationary so, status is a, of a year. Um, so we need to get somebody in and start and see what happens. Well, Chief Altman stood up and was completely supportive over yeah. this. He said it was, you know, frustrating because a lot of their calls, um, they end up transporting someone with a mental health problem to the hospital, who then ends up released and nothing changes. Yeah. And so, and this person probably would be able to do that home visit. But the person I isn't going to be yeah. in a dangerous situation. But the thing is that the people that are. I mean, by its very nature, the population that you're interacting with isn't necessarily of the sort that, like, you can you can just be like, oh, here's like a list of resources, and of course they'll just <laughs> drive themselves to the resource, but that's, that's not and right. then continue to utilize that resource right. on a regular basis. Well, <laughs> like that that is why it's actually in the government's interest to spend money on a person right. who will show up. But that's, as your caseworker. That's in actually, spite that's what of you, do, right? right? But that's actually <laughs> one of the examples that the chief uses. Right. He'll bring out this big bag and he'll show you. He didn't do it at a council meeting. He'll bring out this big bag and say, This is what my officers do. 
They take out these pamphlets, they hand it to the person, and then the person forgets about it or is embarrassed or pushes it away. This person is going to follow up. Yep. Whether they're going to bother them on the phone, whether they're going to show up at the door. I mean, when my mom went died at hospice and my father was not like, you know, doing counseling and stuff, they called three times at least. And, you know, I said, oh, could you call them again? And they were like, well, after three times, it's, you know, harassment. Right. But they, <laughs> <laughs> so they followed up like that, you know, to let him know, well, here's this thing that you can do and here's that that can do. What can I help? Here are the services in town. Do you want mediation to be involved? I mean, there's, you know, um, aren't we Aren't we continuing to, to define what's already been defined? Everything from applicants should possess. Yeah, we don't down. actually need to discuss that anymore. Well, it's yeah, already, yeah, like, we made the recommendation, done. it was accepted, now it's being implemented, yeah. and now the council's deciding whether yeah. at what point they. We have to trust that the professionals that are in the job know what they're going to have to do. Yeah. And that's the whole point of hiring professionals. And I think we should also trust the chief and yeah. um, the village manager on this to, I mean, as long as council's comfortable with the wording, I mean, I think maybe if you added that wording, you know, that yeah, makes it better. But I would definitely, you know, make sure I have that conversation with them about that one. You talk about the that first line about applicants. Yeah, adding yeah. like the yeah. minimum, yeah. Yeah. you know, bachelor's degree in social work or similar area, so something along yeah, those I don't lines. Think that work. a lot of work, and it's nice, especially like the other day. I do too, and I'm sure that the solicitor has to look over that as well because there was some reason about not putting the word social work, but I don't know the legalities of that. I certainly want to appreciate Kate's commitment. And tenacious, sticking with it, and plowing through, and working on it for an extended period of time. It's, I think it's going to be great once it gets going. Thanks, Kate. And you can blame me if it Thank you for that. I'm fine with that. All right. Okay. Anything else on this item? Any other reports from other committees? Well, uh, just an update that um, Bill and I are going to Dayton on Friday, and we're going to meet with uh, the person who heads up Dayton's um, police community, I forgot what they call themselves, but basically their entity that tries to work with citizen, the relationship between citizens and the police. And we're just going to hear about their challenges and how it's going. So, so Sean, we haven't been ignoring that issue. That's why I kind of cut you off before. We, it's, in, it's been in the background. It's something that we are thinking. Uh, yeah, I'm aware that, that it's in the background. I'm, I'm grateful that it is at least in the background, uh, but, and, and I'm very much looking forward to it um, evolving and, and coming into the program. Any other uh, reports? No, the minutes. What? Yes. The minutes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty exciting. Right? Okay. Seven minutes early. Uh, unless somebody wants to like find some typos in the minute. So move. Uh, so move. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Right. Right. Any opposed? Yeah. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? So moved. Second. All in favor? Right. All right. Thanks, everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Happy Hanukkah, everybody. It's first time. See you right downtown. It is the first night of Hanukkah. It is. Oh, Chief, I forgot to report. Chief and. Oh, you're too late. We just want to Sorry. And Colin, they reported their plans for New Year's Eve. And oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Was the fire department is kind of sponsoring it in yeah, a background sort of way, not to interrupt with all the general way we've always done it. And they're going to be present and bringing trash bags. And uh, are they going to wait 45 ball? minutes before cleaning people out of the way? I'm sure they're not going to clear us out too quickly. <laughs> that would be a huge mistake. <laughs> 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 you got to be oh, yes. the <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, John, they got I got this stuff for you. Yeah. You can watch it on uh, 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 so now, 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 now,